What's up everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. I'm back. So, been checking out some new games. Hey, 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 this is my video. You be quiet. Anyways, been checking out some new games. A lot of you suggested Tales of Aaron, and uh, we actually have a pretty active... It's a smaller community, but we're getting into this game a little bit now. So I wanted to give you guys my impressions on it. I'll probably put out a couple guides to it, because it's, it's a good enough game. I'm enjoying it enough that I feel like... Uh, I can put some stuff out on it and well anyway so uh god what to even start with and i guess real quick we'll show you combat and then we'll get into the the meat and bones of what all is happening so the storyline's pretty much terrible and i think i might actually not be powerful enough like this next thing but either way i could show you anyways because better videos there when the presenter fails their first fight right <laughs> all right so the storyline by the way in this like i said it's terrible but you know it's fully voice acted and stuff at least in japanese or my bad not fully voice acted they always do like the first line only named characters get the talk and pretty much it's your typical story you know boy wants to be a hero mysterious girl appears out of nowhere with amnesia that type of thing Every story since forever. So this is the way the combat works. Uh, pretty much it's side scroller, a little bit RPG. All the skills are below here, along with the buffs. So uh, there's no way to pause or anything. It has your same elemental thing, exact same as KC up here. So bonus damage works like that. The left skill is the skill that comes up more often. The right skill is the ultimate skill. And they all have cooldowns. But like that one, that was a big AoE heal. It also does a little regen over time, every time she does her ability. Barrier of Life, that's basically a shield percentage of your life, so it works kind of the same way Sid works in the game. Mifusa, by the way, the girl on the left there, she's the current big banner unit. They just released a new banner, but that unit's apparently not as good as this one. So... But just to get you guys a little sense of the combat here, there's a time limit. The more combos you get, the higher your damage multiplier goes. There's waves and everything. It'll show you your treasure you got up here. And then also, uh, this little thing you see a charge in over here, that's actually a little super attack. You can have this summon that's with you. Uh, that girl in the front, by the way, she's one of the better tanks in the game. She can put up this thing called Time Shield. You see all these stacks she has. Every time her Time Shield gets taken down, it's basically a damage absorb, like Demo Shield. Uh... Pretty much she's buffing her crit up to 10 percent, uh, 10 stacks and buffing her attack percentage. So her attack gets to 150. I guess it's hard to see, I'm sorry. <laughs> her attack gets to 150. And her crit rate gets to 50 just from the bonus. And then here's the special attack that you guys can see. You level this up as well. The higher you get it, the more passives you get and the stronger your uh, super attack's gonna be here. You see I just wipe that. Uh, I guess it turned out we were okay to fight that after all. And then you get the RP after the fact. I'll let you guys see some of the uh, some of the characters that are in the story. That's our hero right there, our Theo. <laughs> He's actually a good character in this game, though. Oh, the cool thing about this game too is you can actually progress even with like uh, three star characters. So it's not like uh, a lot of gacha games where you really need like the elite elite in order to get to do certain things and to do them well. And this stupid annoying Sundari girl over here on the right, she's like a insect or I said incest, a insect fairy or some BS like that. She's guarding like the special girl. Who's this girl? Aisha. Aisha, I haven't quite gotten through the storyline yet, but they're kind of hinting that she's some type of, like, goddess or something. But whatever. Game actually has fairly nice music, too. Kind of enjoying that. So there's loot. Um, a lot of the loot here, it's either to level up the costumes, which you can get in this game, or to level up the uh, players themselves experience, the characters, gold. The type of currency. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I've 
been seeing gold coins since I played Mario. Come on. Divinity. Divinity is that thing I showed you that does that super attack. That charges up, so... Higher level you get it, the more passive she starts to get. And then eventually you get a higher form of her you need to level up. I actually had to level my Divinity to 10. So that's the way the world works. There's also hard modes and uh, hell modes. Which on the world map, I've only gotten to chapter 4. But if I go to chapter 1, you see I can do hard mode. But hard mode actually is pretty hard. Like, look at this. My characters are all in their 50s or so, and this is saying suggest level 70. And this is the first world. As you can see, it's not that far up. I've done only the first two maps. So it gets pretty crazy. Hard is actually pretty hard in this game. So some other stuff I'll show you. Uh, there's your typical, like, you know, send characters out to collect things. Stuff. Little timers here. There, you get 30 chances to do it a day, so you kind of have to balance it. Uh, but pretty much you can go out and collect. Like in this case, this is stuff to XP costumes. This is stuff to XP characters. But, you know, you get it. Uh, the, there's a thing when you send them out, it'll say best race. And it gives you additional multipliers. So if you get it high enough, it'll give you extra of the loot. But unfortunately for me, I don't have that. I'm not sure what power drop rate is. It doesn't really say. Thing, the translation in this is suspect sometimes, so... Just kind of got to roll with it. <laughs> but this game's actually super fun. I'm, I'm actually uh, having a good time with it here. So, and then over here, these are rewards that you need to actually maximize the level of your characters. It's this thing called uh, Discover Potential or something like that. I'll show you when we get to the character screen. But these are all mats for the different elements. So there's water and or ice and fire and earth and... Or wind and divine and all that. So right now, the greater majority of my characters are water, uh, fire, wind, and light. So that's why I'm getting these ones. But uh, honestly, in this game, you probably actually want to run mono teams. A mono team would mean all light or all fire or whatever. Uh, from what I can tell, the, the light... And the wind teams are pretty strong in this game, but I have a mismatch of both because I'm kind of just... I'm trying out a little bit of everything, so... Uh, we'll get to... Go ahead. So Divinity, that was that thing I was talking about earlier with the super attack. I leveled my previous one to 10, and then once you level her to 10, you can unlock the, the next tier, and eventually we'll unlock this one as well. So what happened in the first one, you can see here, these are some of the bonuses that they gave you. My screen's okay. Alright, so yeah, like attack plus 30. When a party member uses a skill, there's a 5% chance to reduce enemy defense by 10%. And then when you get the new version, I still gotta go back and unlock all that stuff as I level it up. She hits harder. And then, as you can see, these are slightly upgraded, like defense by 15% instead of 10%, attack by 40% instead of 30%, and we get this additional ability at 15. Uh, upon presence, reduce attack interval of the party by 90% for 10 seconds. Not sure what presence mean, but attack interval is basically uh, the amount of times they attack. So reducing it by ninety percent, I'm pretty much assuming that's just like yeah, 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 yeah. like you casted haste times fifteen thousand on them. That's a cool little thing. There's also uh, you're not stuck to that. You can also get some of these other ones. Uh, I'm using that one because I think that one's top tier. But there's one that heals here. There's one that can weaken enemies. So, stat debuffs. And then there's one here that basically deals damage and weakens enemies. So, but the one I use is primarily to buff and uh, do a little bit of damage. So, the characters here. Uh, this screen's going to take a bit of time, guys, so I hope you'll bear with me. So, right now, uh, the maximum level in this game is 100. Let me move myself so you guys can see that. Maximum level in this game is 100. Now, getting to 100 is actually really hard. You can probably get to 40 fairly painlessly pretty early into the game. Um, but not only are you... You have to come over here to enhance character and then feed them these fruits in order to, like... Like, you gotta select somebody and then in order to get them XP to level them up or do whatever you want to do. 
but like right now, actually, I want to level my healer a bit. You see my healer is still three stars, but she's the starter healer. She's actually still pretty damn good. Not not amazing. The five stars in this game, for the most part, are all like really super uh, crazy powerful. But in this case, I got real good tank, uh, decent DPSers, really good DPSer in this case. And then just a base heal. So hopefully at some point when I draw, I'm going to draw a uh, super heal. But this is what happens when you enhance your characters. That's a daily quest proc coming up there. And you know, you get the stats that it says. So you're just trying to get their stats. All your healers in this game, by the way, they heal for a percentage of their attack. So getting their attack up actually does help them in this game. Now discover potential. That's a thing you can use to raise the maximum level. Because everyone's level capped at certain levels until you go and gather those uh, materials. Not only can you gather them from the area I showed you earlier, but there's also uh, active dungeons you can go farm them in and hopefully a lot drop. Sometimes not a lot drop. So you, you can do either one either way. But I pre-farmed all this just to be able to show you guys. So take some gold. And we're going to get four skill points. I'll go into skill points next. But start discovery, all it does. You see the uh, the little check marks right here so you see when I hit this checks off another check mark on her so and we also got extra skill points and this stuff right here these Aaron hearts are actually fairly hard to get although you do get them from quest stuff and then more wind elements you can get them from third to fourth now another cool part about this game is if you come to a point where you see a material and you don't have it you can just click the Sorry, you can just click the uh, stage reward here. And it'll take you right to whatever dungeon it is. As long as you've unlocked it. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. In this game. But so now, she unlocked a bunch of stuff. So we are actually going to... Uh, hold on. Back to this. Go to the character. Here in this case. I'll show you how she works too right after we're done here. But this is Leona. Leona is a very strong... Let me move myself so you guys can actually see her now. Uh, she's a very strong wind character in this game, melee. And she can actually turn into a very decent fighter and deal some decent damage. Now, I I'm going to explain everything to you on the screen before we go into the skills. So, like I said, this is the awakening session where you max their level cap. Uh, this is attack. This is HP. Uh, the yellow bar is what their base was, or what their base currently is, based on whatever you've given them for uh, gear, or not gear, uh, that passives and all that. Now, the green bar is what you've improved on with either uh, gear that you've put on them, or in some cases, there's this thing right here. Now, in this game, if you happen to summon a copy, like let's say I summoned a copy of Leona, uh, you can do this up to 10 times. You can also farm this Awakening Fruit which I'm not quite sure exactly where to get that yet. It's fairly rare. But essentially, when you get copies of the character, it boosts their passive stats. So, like, I'll show you with another character. Uh, you see the plus two here on Mafusa. So these are the passive boosts I've gotten because I've gotten a couple extra copies of her. And so that's pretty cool. And once you get to 10, uh, it stops giving you the passive buffs on this, but it gives you this special uh, unlock 10 awakening buff. So basically in this case, it's going to be increase HP of light type characters in the party by 80%, which is super strong in this game. Like really strong. I don't know why it's called Killer Rabbit, but you know how these games work. So, <laughs> but that's a cool thing. So if you get copies of a character, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you'll get some stat bonuses, but let's go back to... Leona here. And you know, these are all pretty easy to figure out. Attack intervals, basically how long it takes them to attack. 1.4 seconds in the face. Defense. Restoration. Honestly, I'm not sure what restoration. It seems like it's passive healing, but I'd have to check. Uh, crit chance, crit damage, attack interval. And then they'll kind of give you uh, an explanation of what characters do here. Basically, warriors, they're your tanks, but they can also be decent DPSs if you get their attack high enough. I built her more tanky. Uh, but if there's a big group of enemies for warriors, they can only hit, in most cases, one at a time unless they're doing some of their skill abilities. Now, if we come over here to magicians, magicians are specialized in killing multiple groups of, of enemies and also casting uh, debuffs on them, like knockbacks and 
defense decreases, etc. Snipers, that's basically your archers in this game. Uh, they're very good at doing uh, heavy single target damage. But they're very squishy. Like this girl, Lotus Moon, I have a real hard time keeping her alive. Unfortunately, because her stab bonuses don't stack as high as the other characters, even though she's a four star. And then your healer, you know, your healer. Buff, heal, passive heal, does a bit of damage. So we're going to get over into the skills now, like I said. This is the status screen. So your skills, they all have 10 ranks. Uh, just like in most games, when you get the 10th rank, it usually is way more effective a boost than the previous 9 ranks. So, uh, like I said, I got 4 skill points earlier. You can also reset them. I think it costs a certain amount of gold. It's not that expensive. So in this case, I... What I've chosen to do, you can click on the skills for further uh, explanations of what they're doing here. Uh, yeah, this character is so hard to explain. Okay, I'll explain this character before I get into what I've done with her. Uh, she has this special called Time Shield. Only a couple characters in the game can stack this. Time Shield is basically an absorb shield. So it doesn't matter if you get hit with a basic attack or if you get hit with an ultimate, it absorbs all the damage. So she puts up a certain amount, like you see here, she puts up three whenever she casts this on a 30 second cooldown. And then each layer prevents some enemy attacks for 25 seconds, stacks up to 10 times with the layers, and then this ability itself knocks away enemies. So if I were to level this up, what I'm actually looking for, because I'm not that into her damage right now, is for more time layers of time shield, but in this case it wouldn't be like that, so I'm not going to put those points there. Now, Active Barrier, this is her ultimate ability. All the second skills for characters are ultimate abilities. And the next two are passives. Uh, party gets Absolute Barrier, reduces damage received by 20% for 20 seconds. Super strong. And then she gains two layers of Time Shield on top of that. Now, what I would be looking for then is, you see how now if I level this up with my four points, she's getting four layers of Time Shield, as well as the damage received uh, goes down. Probably going to end up investing in that, but I am going to look at one more thing here. So you see it goes from 20% and 2 layers to 27% and 4 layers, so that's pretty good. Now, before I get to that, I'll show you this skill. Uh, this is a passive. Gain a layer of time shield every 30 seconds or for every 20% of HP lost. Each shield, or basically they're explaining time, time shield again. Um... So basically this one, she gets a time layer shared passively every 30 seconds and then, or if she happens to take 20% of her HP in damage, she gets a layer as well. Now if I level this up, you see that the seconds go down, so that turns to 28 seconds and 19%. And so it's pretty good. Basically, I would be getting time layer shields on her 8 seconds faster and... Also, instead of 20% HP loss, she'd be getting a layer for every 16% HP loss, which is actually pretty good. Uh, but I'm probably actually going to skill Active Barrier before that, just because it helps the team more. So I'll show you this last ability. This is what makes her uh, pretty much... This is the one I chose to skill up first. Each, layer, each time a layer of Time Shield is added, increase the attack by 15% and crit rate by 5%. Crit rate is the amount of chance you have to crit. Uh, this effect can stack up to 10 times and last for 25 seconds. All skill cooldowns are reduced by 2 seconds for every time layer, sh layer shield removed. Now, when this skill first started, this was 1 second. So the fact that that gets to 2 seconds is, is amazing. And you're basically, once you get 10 stacks of this, you get 150% damage bonus. And she her crit rate goes up 50%. So that's why I'm saying you can actually build her to be more DPS. And that's actually what I should be doing, which is I'm starting to kind of turn that paradigm, but she's also my tank, so I gotta make sure she stays up, because as long as she stays up, we're in business. As soon as she goes down, we're in trouble. So, But at some point, I'll build her more DPS because of this ability. So this is what makes her... She's a 5-star. Five 5-stars five are the best characters in the game right now. But like I said, you can progress with 4 stars and 3 stars. It's just 5 stars, just as they should be. Anything legendary in a game, guys, it should be freaking epic and freaking life-changing in that game, in my opinion. 
all the time. Like, don't be like Blizzard, where, like, you're playing Diablo 3 and 20 legendaries drop and you pick them all up. Oh, this legendary sucks. Oh, this legendary sucks. Oh, this legendary might be good for another character type. Oh, this legendary sucks. Like, oh, fuck that. Like, legendaries should be like, oh my god. That's amazing, and Blizzard and some other games kind of polluted that for us. A legendary should not be baseline. A legendary should not be normal. A legendary should not be what you are expected to have for everybody. A legendary should be legendary. A legendary should be rare. And a legendary should make a game-changing difference. You know, and a lot of it's, it's hit or miss, but at least try to in your games when you make games, guys. That's... That's one of my pet peeves with any type of, like, epic or legendary item in a game. It's just, it doesn't feel legendary. But in this case, these characters, these two legendary characters I have actually do feel legendary. Um, so I showed you her. That's why I'm choosing to skill up right now. So, she's really good. Now, I'll just give brief uh, explanations of the other characters I'm, actually, I'm uh, using. Mafusa. She's one of the on-banner characters right now, so if you're going to start this game, try to re-roll for her. Also, before I uh, forget, re-rolling in this game is kind of a process. There's guides how to do it online. You can't just simply delete the data and, uh, you know, uh, reinstall and restart. It doesn't work like that. Um, it attaches itself to profiles. You can play as a guest account. It'll attach itself to Facebooks and, I believe, mails. Maybe not mails. I believe Gmail. And then, of course, you can sign in on the website and do it. Um, also, there are some codes. By the way, I will put the codes in the description. If you are going to start this game, you can put them in. In fact, real quick before, since I'm telling you guys that. Uh, if you're going to insert these codes, you come up here to the top left on information. And right here, gift code. Now, there is a 30-second cooldown when you enter the codes. Get it right or get it wrong. So be aware of that, because there's multiple codes in this game. So... But yeah, rerolling's a bit of a process. There's a guide to it, guys. I'll just tell you to go look at the guide if you're going to reroll in this game, because it's a little bit more. It basically attaches itself to your profile, if that makes sense. Anyways, let's get back to the characters. So I'll show you guys Mafuse, and then... So Mafuse, the cool thing about her is, uh, she is a holy character. Holy is apparently the most powerful characters in the game right now. Uh, the cool thing about her is... She's removing a buff from an enemy on her one, and that's up every 10 seconds, so that's pretty cool. And it's hitting everybody, which is sick. Uh, this is the DPS. I chose to skill per ultimate right now, because it's on a 30 second timer and it makes sense. So, 13 50% light damage. Attach darkness to all enemies. Darkness is basically a 15% chance to miss, uh, like a blind effect, pretty much, so... And attaches Barrier of Life to the party to absorb damage equal to 8% of character's HP for 10 seconds. So it's a damage shield. So, and that's coming up every 30 seconds. So not only is it doing a lot of damage, but it's also drastically improving our mitigation with the blind and with the light, the damage shield. So the next skill I'm going to get up on her, I'm actually debating. Depending on if this can remove more than one buff eventually, I might skill that up. Uh, her passive's down here. Deal damage equal to 30% of attack to all enemies every 8 seconds when you have an HP shield. So our HP shield is going to be a barrier of life here. But barrier of life lasts, if you read it, 10 seconds. So it is up every 30 seconds. But, you know, every 8 seconds it's just going to be a little bit of damage. But maybe once you get this up, maybe the seconds will go down to like 4 seconds or 5 seconds or something and more damage and... That'd be good. And then also, uh, she can also has a chance to get a uh, barrier of life from basic attacks. 25% attach 50 damage. I assume attach 50 damage is due an extra 50 damage. I'm not sure. And then barrier of life. Absorb damage equal to 4% of character's HP for 10 seconds. So I, the thing I don't get about this is, is that really two barriers of life? Because this one does 8% because I've leveled it up all the way. Whereas this one says 4%. Triggers once every 15 seconds, so... You can't just bring her attack interval down and just ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and they've thought of that. But probably I'm going to skill this up, most likely. Or this up, not sure. But I need to work on her uh, potential growth later. Now, we'll get into gear. Oh, I forgot I unlocked a new slot. Okay, well, excellent. This will be a good tutorial then. So gear... 
gear in this game has its own uh like break system and level up system etc so we'll go over it right now. now as you can see this gear on her is level 25 and i've also been upgrading the passive which is right here so the way that gear works these two things are going to be random and you can try to convert them there are these things that drop called gold hammers so you can re-roll them basically but so ideally you want to have something that it affects you know win 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 holy 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 fire 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 etc but in this case i got double wind on a wind character so it works for me and then i also do have a fire character in the party so that's not completely useless that thing right there now keep in mind to pay attention attack of wind character means only on the character it's equipped on hp of fire characters in our all party or in the party is everybody in the party so pay attention to that when you're looking at these uh, if you want, this is where you come over here and enhance. These are the enhanced materials. You saw me farming them a little bit. They also drop in the world and stuff. And this is capped right now. Now, but this is where you level gear if you're going to level gear. Now, if you want to uncap, you need to find an item with the same exact name. Hit it over here. It'll go into here. And then you hit this and you spend a little bit of gold and it levels up the gear to 40 and then... The basic stats are going to go up, which the basic stats are right here. I actually need to try to find some stuff to do that with. And then uh, Costume Fusion, which I skipped over earlier. That affects this right here, which is the, the passive skill of the armor. So every time you get Costume Fusion, I'll demonstrate for you guys. You know, this is three-star gear, so it's not going to level it as much. Uh, most costumes, when you have like a solo stat, it starts out at 20%. Uh, Five-star costumes, there's... All the way from 3 star to 5 star. You usually just want to stick with the 5 star stuff. Unless you're just starting the game. But essentially, you know. You're just sacrificing gear here. To level up other gear. I guess there's a limit on material. So, okay. And then you hit fuse. Oh, it's chance to upgrade skill. I didn't know that. I thought it was a progress bar. Oh, I learned something new, and I told you just wasted a bunch of gear. <laughs> so pretty much, I guess this is like a roll. You're giving yourself a chance. So I guess if you wanted to, you could just roll like one, uh, one like low-level piece of gear and see if you just happen to get the lucky roll. But pretty much, once you do nail this... You know, it's going to increase the multiplier of whatever's in here. So that's how that works. Now, I actually need to get her a new piece of gear. And like I said, I was going to start focusing uh, damage on her. But the problem is, it looks like I don't have any wind gear for her. But real quick, we can try to solve that. Hold on. Uh, she doesn't necessarily have to wear wind gear. It just really helps with... Uh, when you automatically have one stat for wind. I don't have enough jade. So this is the shop. Uh, the main thing to know about the shop, because most of this is the pay stuff. Uh, there's a jade exchange. Jade is this currency right here. You can come over here and buy any five star uh, equipment for any element. The weapons give uh, attack of the element. And the armor gives HP of the element. So in this case, but I don't have enough gems. But... I'm going to save up and eventually buy a wind uh, attack item for her. And then also you can come down here too. Uh, you can exchange for gold. That gold hammer that I told you that uh, changes the passive stats randomly. And then these are for XP uh, equipment. You know, if you're just rolling in the jade. So let me just... I'm going to get her something that will at least affect wind somehow. Attack of wind. They'll give me a second. I'm gonna start looking through stuff. Light characters in party by 130. And then HP of water characters in the party by 9. Our healer is a water character. And our main DPS is a... A light character. So that wouldn't be too bad a replacement. We'll put that on for now. And real quick, let me start looking through some other pieces here, just in case there's something better.
crit rate of wind characters, HP of wind character, HP of fire characters. My fire mage right now, the biggest problem in my party is that she dies a lot, but unfortunately this isn't a group buff. This is only a if she were a fire character, but my tank gets tanker and she crits more. That's pretty tempting there. But... I'd much rather have my light hero hit harder, because that's the thing. I'm tanky enough in most cases. We just really need more DPS. Crit rate of water characters. Crit rate, by the way, does nothing for healers, unfortunately. In At least from what I've been told. And for whatever reason, all the guns in this game that are for water, they all have crit rate on them, and I want to tag so that my healer heals more. That was kind of silly. Alright, well, I guess we've pretty much gone through enough. Alright, that's fine, so you can keep that on for me. Now, what I'm going to start to look for is uh, gear that I can break. It's too bad. There's not an easier way to maneuver through all this. As you can see, when you wear uh, the high-level gear, it's a little bit harder to break it all. Harder to find copies of it. But, you know, like I said, with that Jade thing, you can kind of control your own destiny there. Let me make sure this is worth breaking. Fire, and this is a light sword, but crit rate of fire characters is 6. And attack of light characters is... We could potentially use... You know what? I am having an issue keeping her up, so I'm going to go ahead and break this just to get her more stats. And Having your attacker with more attack is never a bad thing as well. And it's not that expensive. So. Now, the only potential issue is I can't look at the stats of what I'm breaking, so I wonder if what I'm breaking is actually perhaps decent gear. So let's go take a look. I already broke that one. Your water character, 25%. That is actually not bad. That would actually go decent on my healer. Uh, occur. No, because she kind of needs these for survivability, and this already has decent attack. Plus, it's like damn near impossible to get this attack of water characters. At least from my experiences. So I'll go ahead and sack that too. No, it's not bad, but... You know, it's not that... It's actually not that hard right now to farm 5-star stuff. Uh, I'll show you guys why in a second. Just... And gear this up a bit so that this character stops dying some. Alright. Well, now she's rocking a bit more health and attack. Yeah, you see how, even though she's 4 star, her HP. That I probably what I should do is uh, get her armor. But we'll work on that later. Alright, so that's pretty much all the gear stuff you guys need to understand. Now, uh, there are events going on. A couple of them. They're here. A lot of them are like login bonuses. Uh, this one's new. This is the new hero, the warrior Chloe Fire. Not quite sure how good she is yet. She just came out today, literally. And then, you know, this will kind of go over all the events. This was the previous banner. Like I said, Mirafusa is really good. So if you can get your hands on her, go for that. And the more uh, 
the more ten draws you do that summons uh, all of this equipment and stuff, and you get extra copies of the characters start becoming available. And this is that awakening fruit that gives them, uh, like, you got a copy of the character. That's pretty sweet. And then there's some other, you know, when you do all of this stuff. I actually need to start paying attention to. And ultimate blessing, you know, the higher level your characters get, the more stuff you get. And then there's a, like, the Facebook thing. You do that, you get these rewards. Oh, looks like I got a water bow. Oh, for costume rewards. Oh, excellent, okay. So as you level your costumes too, you get a uh, bonus stuff, so that's pretty gnarly. And then there's daily quests. Uh, these are the daily quests you see from here. The more of them you do, you can unlock these chests over here to get additional stuff. Try to complete these every day. There's also weekly quests. And then uh, achievement quests. Title achievement. You'll get titles when you do certain things. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead real quick. Get that water thing. A water thing. Got to see if it's any good. Oh, wow, that's actually bad. I don't think that's what it would I got something that it would have to be... You know, one thing. Be a book. Oh, yeah, I think it was this. Ooh, attack of water character. That is so hard to get. Um, attack of light character, HP of fire character. Okay. I'm probably going to put that on. Just let me figure out which piece of gear I don't want. Attack of water character, 14, 17. HP of water character. HP of wind characters in the party. All right, well, my tank is tanking. Get rid of it. I need my healer to heal, like freaking heal and hit hard. And she heals. So we take a bit of a mitigation loss, but the heals are going to go up. And I have a lot of passive healing, the way that I built my healer. Let's go ahead and enhance this room. And... Go ahead and work passive. I'm going to roll it with 87, guys. Let's go, baby. So attack 40%, so now she's going to heal a fair amount harder. She took a bit of a survivability hit, and then so did my wind tank just a bit, but you see she has 87, 31 health. So if she's dying with that much health, I'm a failure as a human being. So. There's some more mats for uh, doing that Potential discovery. Uh, basically increasing max level, like I was showing you guys earlier. Alright, so. Oh, apparently. Quest. Reach level 15 in World Star Exploration. Gems, in case you're wondering, that's the currency you use to summon in this game. Everything else should be self-explanatory. You need uh, your first banner when you first roll. I think it's 940. Uh, whenever you roll on a banner that is new, it's 940. And then after that, it's 1980. For a 10 pull, I mean. So, in fact, you know what? They should have a new banner. I guess we could try to summon up. <laughs> Kiamat's apparently super strong in this. So's Hera. But I don't have either of them, so I can't tell you. I have the other... I thought there was another banner. I guess maybe she, you get her through an event. Oh, 
Okay, I thought this was gold for a second, but it's a special currency. Not quite sure. Apparently I have 2,000 of them. But I'll save till I get a 5 star. Well, I'm sorry guys, I wanted to summon, but I guess it's not a new banner. It is still the old banner. Alright, so other things to know about this game. <clears throat> um, workshop. Workshop's basically where you can create your own costumes once you get the mats. Actually pretty cool, but it's random. So it could be three star, it could be five star. So just try to build whatever you need. Or whatever you want. Like right here, I got a bunch of wind stuff. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's see if we can get a wind thing built. Take some time. And I'm saving this other stuff because this is also the material you use to uh, break levels. So. so this is the craft. There's also a reforge. Yeah, you, know, you put a you put a costume here. But I'm not quite sure what the prerequisites are. I guess oh, the costume must be level 100. So there you go. Inventory. They'll just show you everything in your inventory exchange. Oh, apparently, okay, so you can exchange some of the lower-end stuff to get some of the higher-end stuff. Cool, I haven't gotten to the point where I can do a bunch of that yet. Okay, so what's other stuff you can do? Massive battle? So this is one of the cool things about this game, is even when you run out of stamina, um, you can come to Massive Battle and you can quick join. And you can quick join anything. There's event stuff, there's certain stuff for certain elements, so you can get elemental drops. Or you could just be a G and hit all. One of the best things to do right now is go to event and hit quick join. If you manage to get in, sometimes they're full, but if you manage to get in, it'll take you to a raid boss, or a boss basically. And it doesn't matter in most cases how powerful they are, even if they can destroy you, because you're, you're doing it with a group of people and there's a lot of real strong characters in this game so don't be afraid to throw down and try to get in on some of them especially when you have lower stamina these raid coins right now the semi-demon emblems farm the living hell out of those because uh i'll show you why give me a second so there's this thing you see here side story uh it's it's its own story and it's its own uh progression thing this proof of battle over here, there's a bunch of quests, like kill X number of demons, create multiplayer dungeons here, that's just what we just did. And then there's some that's like, beat the multiplayer dungeon by yourself and you get some of these rewards. Um, try to come in here and do all these quests during this event, because the stuff they give you is really good. And these coins, you come over here to Restored Bolt. Oh, it's hard to do, but Restored Bolt. And there's a stock here. You see how it says round five reward? I've actually done this four times already, but these coins, you put them here and you can draw stuff that's in here. So it gives you mats, uh, it gives you enchanting stuff, it gives you some gear. It also gives you some crystals, some gems, the Aaron's hearts, which are used to upgrade uh, costumes to 100% or 100 levels. Gold hammers used to reforge costumes and Sulasha, who's actually a pretty good character. So you come over here to the draw 10, does the summoning thing, and you know, you can just skip by it. So I just got Sulasha there on top of more jade, more gold, more materials to XP characters and equipment. So, and you know, you just farm this out. It'll tell you the total number of these you got. And even if you have no energy, you can go and do those multiplayers and get some of these crystals. So if you're new to the game, even if you're like a level one, go in there and get as much of this stuff as you can. It'll it'll uh, level you up very freaking fast, and you'll get some amazing gear and some amazing mats to level your characters and and costumes and stuff. Just farm out everything because it's free. You know, it's free. It's easy to get, even if you're new. And until all the stock is gone of everything, just take it all. Because it's all mats you need, even if you happen to get like all the good stuff early. Just go and get what you can. And then over here, once you're farmed out, you can't draw, you just reset the vault. 
when you reset the bullet, I think eventually, like round 10 or something, you can run out, but you know, just reset the bullet, start drawing again. And then you can sacrifice guns and stuff to upgrade gear. You start to get like stamina pots and higher end rewards. It's really good stuff, guys. So come over here and do this ASAP. Should honestly be one of the first things you do as soon as you unlock it and as soon as you got uh, a squad that can take a couple hits. So it gives you the event time here. Actually, that's weird. It seems like the date's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. I guess it's up for a while. I should probably try to beat it because I don't know when it's going to go away. But like I said, you just go to Massive Battle and you farm those coins. And then you can also farm like the demons and stuff. Uh, the best place to farm the demons... Hold on. Oops, wrong. Uh, best place to farm the demons, come over here to Forest and just farm Knight 3. And you'll get a bunch of demon kills. I think it's like 5 kills per map. And it's fairly easy, even if you're newer to the game. Uh, just get to like your level 20s and something like that, and you'll be fine. So that's what you do for the event. Uh, they just started a new event. Let me actually go look, look at it. Yeah, I guess... Oh, because I need to be higher level, apparently. Well, let's go ahead. This is about... Oh, you know what? This might be the hard mode. Yeah, we do. I amped our damage a bit. Oh, it's this guy. Okay. So the way combat works is Berserk thing. Eventually when it gets low, it'll start charging. He's weak during that point, so you try to save your attacks for that. And then when this gets to full, if he gets to full, he berserks, and then he's pumping out more damage, and he has more abilities and stuff. This is for you guys when you first start playing the game. Chloe Bonchard. Get enough of these to invite Chloe to join the team. Oh. Okay. Fortunately, it only lets me do that lower level one, because I guess I gotta get farther in hard mode. Okay, well that's there for me eventually. Now guilds in this game. Um, you get the you can see we made the uh, mania guild over here. Uh, pretty much there's a guild there's a guild dungeon. You can come in and you climb floors. The higher you climb the floors, the more rewards you get. Uh, everybody in the party, so it'll be mailed to you. And then there's floor rewards. So when you get every five floors, you get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, etc. So it's pretty cool. We got a couple people from uh, the Discord and Knights Chronicle playing in here. There's also a guild shop. Uh, early thing I recommend to buy, you get guild coins from that guild battle thing I just showed you. Uh, just get some stamina pots, because stamina is really tough in this game. Uh, that's one of the problems with this game is they do not give you enough stamina to do everything that you need to do. They do give you a fair amount of pots. And as you're starting the game early, there's login bonuses for stamina, and you're going to have a lot of stamina because you're leveling, but stamina regen is one every five minutes, so it's honestly not that great. So, And then trial, that was the thing I was telling you guys about, about farming the mats. Uh, right here, skip these in my opinion, these are just like XP and stuff, uh, XP for your characters. Come over here if you need like the growth mats to increase the max character levels. These are the different trials. They'll drop different items for level 1, level 2, level 2, level 3, level 3, level 4, etc. For whatever type of character you got. Fire, dark, wind, water, or uh, light. So come over here, farm those up. Uh, they're kind of difficult, but you know if you're building your party right it shouldn't be that bad. Battle is just basically your world map. You can switch between easy and hard and eventually hell whenever I unlock hell. And then this thing up here, Dark Tide Ruins. So you get these charges per day. And you can put in the most powerful people in your uh, in your party overall. And you see these challenges up here. You get them from like quest rewards and various things. Uh, just go ahead. You know, come over to it. Now these guys, they're going to attack automatically. Your front character, you got to click and they'll do damage. You gotta kill them by the end of this timer, which you guys can't see, but it's right there. 
But you know, just spam away. And then for every floor you clear, you get rewards. And in this case, I got some gold and a costume enhancement. And you only have so many charges of these a day, so try to do as many as you can. And if your party just isn't strong enough to do it, and your clicking skills or whatever aren't strong enough, uh, you know, just level people. Level people, because these guys are doing damage based on the gear that you've given them. So... And there you have it. And you know, the higher you go, the better the rewards. Not sure exactly how high this gets. But I'm sure it's like at least a hundred or something. Oh well. So now that I've done seven quests, I can get this chest over here. And these change per day. Sometimes this is one and seven. Sometimes it's three and five. It could be anything. But you know, try to do all your daily quests when you can. Oh, I forgot the gift stamina. Yeah, that's another uh, good point to join in guilds, guys, is go to your member list and go ahead and give some stamina. It's uh, 20 stamina, I believe, but it, it helps out. And if you have a, a uh, full guild, right now this is just people I know from the Discord and stuff, but if you have a full guild, you will... Uh, have a good amount more of stamina than you normally have. <laughs> Freaking Abby, dude. So Abby, from our guild, she's on our Discord, she's one of my mods. She rolled Hera, who is one of the best characters in the game. She also rolled uh, Marfusa, the archer holy girl I have, and I believe she rolled Tiamat as well, which is like a godlike team. And then she goes over to... Uh, we're playing Epic 7, by the way. I'll put videos out on that, probably starting later this week or next week. Um, and she rolls, like, the most powerful healer in that game and one of the most powerful DPSs in that game, like nothing. It's just like, my god, I wish I had your skills for rolling, homegirl. Uh, guild faculty, passive buffs. So the more you donate of either your gems or your uh, crystals, starts to level up. Uh, everybody's HP or crit rate or whatever. Not sure what active skill ratio is. Maybe it's the cooldown on skills. Yes. <laughs> Too much stuff. And then guild ranking. As far as I know, there is not a PvP. That's just the total, like, you know. Uh, donations and stuff. As far as I know in this game, there isn't a PvP or like a world boss per se that there's rankings on. So one of the problems in this game is there's a lot of hackers, but they really don't have any way to affect you. They're just like beating up bosses and multiplayer dungeons, which actually benefits you. So. Not a huge problem. This game also does have a uh, report a hacker thing. You get rewards for reporting hackers, but I don't know how you would do such things. I haven't really paid enough attention to it, honestly. And yeah, that's pretty much this game in a nutshell, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some battles right now. See how far I can get. You can watch me. Uh, see if I can push a little more in hard mode. Because it's hard, baby. Oh, actually, before I do that, though, I got some level up stuff. Level up some things. <clears throat> Let's see. Who's level needs up? I heal. Go ahead and level up our fire characters outfit a little bit more with all that stuff I got from the free from the free uh... the free coin thing on the event that's going on right now. all right six more levels I might actually unlock a uh, one of those things like getting Getting gear to 50, one of those uh, achievement rewards. 
guess not. Alright, let's go ahead. We're gonna try to do world map here. Uh, this is hard mode, so this is a little bit harder. Everything's like level 70 and stuff. So the odds of me clearing it actually aren't that great. Where the hell does it want me to go? Oh, my bad. I was in the wrong zone. Hard. Okay, there we go. Let's see if this team can handle it or not. I am not expecting great things. <clears throat> Thanks holding up okay. So that's not bad. The thing the thing I wish this game had in combat was faster uh, skill animations and a 2x mode would be nice. But it is what it is. Looks like we're doing okay now. These guys wrecked me last time I fought them. Now her heal... It has a thing where it ticks when she does her basic ability, which I believe is every 10 seconds or 15 seconds. It pulses for 3% of HP, max HP, on every character for 30 seconds. So that's eventually 90% HP. It's better than her active heal. That's why I leveled that to full. If I would have shown you what I leveled on her before I leveled her basic heal. So... I find that to be a better heal over time. Now, poison in this game is really powerful. Poison is 20% uh, of your life per tick, and it'll last for like 20 seconds. So you got to be able to heal through that. Uh, you can cast healing while you're poisoned, unlike in Knight's Chronicle. So there's the time shield and the defensive shield that takes the percentage damage down. You see she's got her 10 stacks. And then time shield is this over here. We got the passive healing going. People got reduced damage received for a bit. Eventually Mafuse is going to put a barrier of life. I mean these guys survive. And we're good. So I'm going to push this hard mode as, hard, as far as I can guys and I'll end the video. Who knows, maybe we'll get a summon out. Oh good, my divinity leveled up. When she gets to 5, we're going to get our first passive. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, this is a boss. We might get ripped. <laughs> Did you see how fast the Berserk thing's going down relative to the amount of damage we're doing? <laughs> The damage is about to pick up for her, and it's going to be a little rough. Our tank does have time shield, but there's only so many of those. So. And she does have some AoE, I believe. And like I said, my fire hero, you see, she just got G'd. I, I probably need to switch DPS, because it's almost like it doesn't matter what I do, she gets wrecked. Mitigation just isn't there. He's all attack. But oh well, we're going to try to get through this anyways. <clears throat> Dang, dude, I wish I could have used this when she was in her weak phase. Alright, let's do this. Oh no, they got my healer. Well, we gotta do it with this team, guys. We got passive heal for a little while, we got time shields, and we got barrier of life. Let's do this. So these are my two five-star units. Just hoping if Mafuse goes down, then it's going to take like 20 years. We can kill this boss. So she's got the blind on her. We got the damage absorb for a little bit. And the girl's got time shield stacks in the front. Damn, she just got wrecked. Ah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this now. If she was still up, we could possibly do it, but I guess... Back to the drawing board, sir. <laughs> ah, I need to progress, level up some characters a bit more. Anyways, guys, so I hope that gives you a good explanation of Tales of Aaron. I'm sure I probably missed a couple things, but I covered most everything. So if you got any questions about this game, you start playing it, you want in the guild, you know, just search up Mania, let me know. 
Uh, I'll put people in the guild. I, we're a casual guild, so if you want to be like super hardcore, don't join our guild. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm running this guild. I'm running a guild in KC. I don't want to be doing too many hardcore guild things because it just takes too much time to do it efficiently. So. Anyways, guys, it's your boy Showtime Doctor. Be looking tonight. I'm going to be doing a... Uh, uh, what's her face? A Nikita dungeon dungeon review. A dungeon review is different from a dungeon guide, but we'll get told it when I get to it. So, yo, I'm Showtime DR. On my YouTube, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed your content. I'll be doing more videos for Tales of Aaron, as well as I'm going to start uh, crossing into Epic Seven and any other games I find good. So, and I'll still be making KC content as well. Uh, you can find me here on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash showtimedr. You can follow me there, come watch my videos, do whatever. Um, and there's a, there'll be a link to my Discord in the notes too. So, And there'll also be a link, like I said, to the codes that get you uh, additional rewards in this game when you start off, guys. So, uh, Oh, also... Oh, real quick before I do, before I leave. Uh, if you are gonna, going to re-roll... Well, from Mafusa, which is this girl right here. I was using her earlier. She was that last character that just died. Uh, if you don't get Mafusa, try... maybe you'll get a Tiamat. A Hera is really good. And there's also other good characters. Nicholas is actually really good. A girl that fights in lingerie. Bao, I'm not sure. Never used her. Bao, I'm sure, would actually be a pretty good. She's a real good healer. And then Tiamat. If you get Tiamat and Mafuse, you're pretty much set for your starting rotation my opinion so anyways guys i guess i could i'll make a separate video on which characters are good as i learn about them so take care guys have a good night i'll see you later peace